Hello everyone. The biggest news item today is the incursion of Ukrainian troops into Russia's border, Kursk region. There are multiple pieces of information coming from all over the place, um, all of the sources. So it's been kind of an intense day of just watching the news and trying to make sense of what has happened. Um, you know, obviously Russia is uh, condemning it as an act of terror and uh, so on and so forth. So far, uh, U.S. position has been Ukrainians have the right to defend themselves. So what's your problem, Russia? And... Uh, Ukrainians, despite being, you know, pummeled by Russian missiles and drones every day, already concocted some clever memes, basically um, to the effect that Zelensky was simply forced uh, by Russia to um, uh, go and protect Ukrainian citizens in the Kursk region since uh, they were being harassed by Russians and forbidden to speak Ukrainian language. And uh, didn't Russia try to join uh, NATO in 2008? So Ukraine just was forced to do this. Obviously a parody of what actually happened when Russia invaded Ukraine. <clears throat> and here is one of the answers as to why there. So these Egypt, as we say here in the South, put a major natural gas transmission hub, distribution hub, right smack dab next to Ukrainian border and didn't bother to protect it after invading Ukraine. You tell me what kind of moron does that. This is the um, distribution center that controls the flow of natural gas from Russia into Europe. And I've been telling you, Europe, you should ditch that shit. And now that hub is very likely under Ukrainian control. Some skirmishes apparently ensued as Ukrainian troops entered. I am not going to say how many people we are talking about and how many units of equipment because, honestly, I don't know. It's impossible to get an accurate picture as of right now. I do know that um, initially uh, Russia released a photo, allegedly, of a, the line of its own tanks coming to the rescue and then was forced to retract that photo because actually it was a photo of their own tanks being destroyed and just left in standing in line where they were. So that came out very awkward. And this is another very suggestive line. And I'll show you in a minute that this statement is literal. It, there's nothing figurative about this. This is literal. Again, in a very stupid and over arrogant move, Russia decided that a long front line was problematic only for Ukraine, forgetting that it also might turn out problematic for them. As the result, even early on, Ukrainian troops managed to penetrate as far as six miles into Russian territory near the town of Suja, where the um, uh, natural gas distribution center is at. So let's take a look because maps are cool. So this map is from the Guardian and it shows where roughly um, this is happening. So the red rectangle shows you roughly the part of the border, Ukrainian Russian border where this is happening. Now the important part about this is in the lower right-hand corner is the edge of the occupied territory where Russian troops are at. And yet, as you can see, to the northwest of them, there is nothing. So what Ukrainians did was basically just strolled right in. 
you can see a similar picture on the map provided by the international uh, the institute for the study of war again the red big red area shows the occupied territories and then the little red dots where there are no Russian troops, show you where the action is taking place right now. Here is a zoom-in video I took earlier so you guys can see again. This is in the northeast of Ukraine, in the Kursk region. I'm sure you've heard the names like Kursk and Belgorod multiple times. And here is Suja. And again, look how close it is. It's right there to the Ukrainian border. We also received these photographs. I'm not sure if this is drone filming or a high resolution satellite. I'm, I'm not 100% certain. And I will have to verify this. So treat this as a developing story. But supposedly this is a group of surrendering Russian snipers, surrendering to the Ukrainian troops. And this is a group of Russian officers surrendering to Ukrainian troops. I am certain we're going to hear more about this. This is probably going to go on for several days and we'll see what the desired result is going to be. I'm sure it's part of some type of an offensive operation, um, but Ukrainian military command has been very good about keeping its cards close to its vest. So at this point, we can only speculate what they're trying to do. Now, for those of you who have been in the army, you know, you, you definitely know this better than I do. Um, considering we have this big open hole there uh, in Russian defenses and considering that their attention has been focused in the Donetsk region, um, if you recall, there's been a lot of celebration by the Russians uh, in terms of, hey, look, we moved into the territory, blah, blah, blah. So um, I think it's only logical to walk in, see if you can circle them from behind and hit, for example, at the northern part of the front line, the northern part of the occupied territory. So that is not impossible. But like I said, we'll, we'll just have to wait and see. Those of us who have been covering events in Ukraine for a long time, for years now, are so jaded at this point that it's very hard to feel any kind of pity for the Russians. So I just hope that they evacuated the children from there. As for the rest, they can fend for themselves.